every major survey and observatory is tracking these numbers. The ATLAS team, who first spotted the object in early July, logs each new position and brightness update in real time feeding trajectory models and alerting the minor planet center of any sudden changes. With the Mars flyby and perihelion both on the horizon, these hard metrics, distance, speed, brightness, set the baseline for everything that comes next. In September, 3, I slash Atlas defied expectations with a surge in brightness. The light curve, which astronomers use to track how an object brightens or fades over time, veered sharply away from the predicted path. This wasn't a subtle uptick, it was a jolt that set off a flurry of debate across professional and amateur astronomy circles. At the heart of the puzzle is the comet's coma, the vast expanding cloud of gas and dust surrounding its hidden nucleus. As the coma grows, it reflects and scatters more sunlight, making the entire object appear brighter in telescopes. By early October, the window for observing 3i slash Atlas from Earth is closing fast. Each evening, the comet dips lower into the twilight, pressed ever closer to the sun's glare. The angle between 3i slash Atlas and the sun, astronomers call this solar elongation, shrinks below 30 degrees by October 21st. That's the threshold where even the largest ground-based telescopes struggle to separate the comet's faint light from the overwhelming brightness of the sky. For most of the world, the practical viewing window has already narrowed to a sliver of time just after sunset, with the comet barely clearing the horizon before vanishing into the haze. Amateur networks are scrambling to capture the last usable images.